Okay, folks, I want to go ahead and pick up uh, on, a, on a graph that we haven't gotten to. This is, this is listed in your notes in section 4.3, uh, but it fits under this section of curve sketching, so we're going to take a look at it. We've got the function f of x is equal to 1 over x. And let's just run through our technique. So the first thing we said is we want to identify the domain of this function. So where is this function defined? Well, uh, we've got the uh, exponential function, which is defined for all numbers, but then we've also got division introduced there. So we've got to make sure that we're not dividing by 0. So the domain of this function then uh, would be all real numbers except for 0. Set of x such that x can be any real number except that x cannot equal 0, or if you like, in interval notation, it would be from minus infinity to 0, in the 0 to infinity. So the next thing is we want to look to see if there are any x-intercepts to this graph. So let's go ahead and try to find any zeros. So to do that, we would set f of x equal to 0. If I set e to the 1 over x equal to 0, that's actually kind of a hard question to answer, uh, because I don't know what the graph of this function looks like, and I don't have really any algebraic means to try to solve for x. So we did this substitution quite a while ago, it was way back in chapter 2, where we can maybe put this in terms of a different variable, let's try, let's call it u in this case. So let's let u equal 1 over x. If we do that, then we get when is e to the u equals 0, and this allows us to fall back on our knowledge of the exponential function's graph. So if this is u and this is e to the u, okay, when does this function, um, touch across the x-axis? Well, it doesn't. So uh, there's no solution to this, so then that means that there's no solution to this either. So because there's no solution, we know that there are no x-intercepts. So this graph, whatever it is, uh, is never going to cross the x-axis. Okay. So the next thing we typically try to find is uh, we try to find the y-intercepts if there are any. Well, to find the y-intercepts, we input the value 0 into the function. But we already said, go back and look at the domain, that we want all numbers, uh, or the domain was all numbers except for 0, so that means f of 0 is undefined. So this is kind of interesting. This graph has no uh, x-intercepts, no y-intercepts. The next thing we want to do is we want to explore the behavior near the exclusions in the domain. So let's look for vertical asymptotes slash holes. And this is actually the reason why I want to do this example, because something really interesting is happening at zero that we haven't encountered before. Okay. So to uh, look for vertical asymptotes and holes, we're going to look at the limit as we approach the problematic areas in the domain. So let's look at the limit as x approaches 0 of e to the 1 over x. Well, this is a limit that's complicated enough, I probably ought to pick a direction of approach. So let's approach it from the uh, right first. And let's see what we can do. Actually, I want to, it doesn't matter, let's start from the left. It's a little more interesting from the left. So, uh, this actual limit we did it way back in section uh, 2. Point, I think it was 2.4 or 2.5. And if you remember what we did then is we, we did a similar substitution uh, to what I did just above. So I want to go ahead and replace 1 over x with u. But notice that my uh, limiting variable is in terms of x. I now need to put it in terms of uh, u. So let's see what we can do here. So our substitution is we let u equal 1 over x. So what do we see? Well, as x approaches 0 from the left, what is u doing? Well, u is approaching what? Well, let's say this, u equals 1 over x, and so is approaching, let's see here, we've got 1 divided by an arbitrarily small but negative number. 1 over a small negative is approaching negative infinity. Pay attention to what I did here. We started off with the limiting variable being x. x was approaching 0 from the left for this function here, 1 over x. But we went ahead and did a u substitution on that. And because of that, I had to also adjust the, direct, the uh, limiting variable. So now we can answer this question based on our knowledge of e to the u, which looks like this. 
So instead of saying what happens as x approaches 0 from the left, we can say what happens in this graph as uh, u approaches negative infinity. So as u is approaching negative infinity, our y values are becoming arbitrarily close to 0. So we get that this limit comes out to be 0. Okay. That was just when we chose to approach uh, 0 from the left. What happens if we approach it from the right? So if we look at the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of e to the 1 over x, we're again going to do the substitution. We'll approach, uh, we'll look at the function e to the u. But now, what happens to our limiting variable? So as x is approaching 0 from the left, u, which equals 1 over x, is approaching what number? Well, let's see here. We've got 1 divided by, oops, the wrong value there. should be plus sign. So we've got 1 divided by a very, very small but positive number that's approaching infinity. So this would be the limit as u approaches infinity. Okay. So this, again, this is a substitution technique. This is a difficult question to answer. We uh, do a u substitution, and then it allows us to look at the graph of e to the u, which we know all about. So what do we see? Well, we see that as u uh, approaches infinity, our y values are becoming arbitrarily large, and we get that this limit is infinity. Okay. So let's summarize this, because I think this is really interesting. Um, we said the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of e to the 1 over x is equal to 0, and the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of e to the 1 over x is equal to infinity. So this tells us that we have a hole at x equals 0, and this tells us that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. And this is probably the first graph that we've seen that has both a vertical asymptote and a hole at the same point. OK. So the next thing I want to look at is the long-term behavior of the graph. Okay, So we've answered the question, are there any vertical asymptotes and holes? And we found yes, yes, both at 0. So now we want to look at the horizontal asymptotes or the end behavior. So what do we want to do here? Well, let's look at the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the 1 over x. Well, again, <laughs> we'll play that game one more time with the substitution. So we've got the limit as uh, something, as u approaches something, but this would be of e to the u. So now, as x is approaching infinity, u, which is equal to 1 over x, what's it doing? Well. Uh, the denominator is getting arbitrarily large. 1 divided by a large number uh, is approaching 0. So here we have u is approaching 0. Uh, specifically, I guess I should assign a direction here. Uh, u is approaching 0 from the, uh, from the right. So um, if we look at the graph of e to the u, what happens as we approach 0 from the right? Well, actually, the direction of approach doesn't matter. As we, but as we approach 0 from the right, the y values are approaching 1. So this limit comes out to be 1. Okay. Uh, I won't work through all the steps, but similarly, as x approaches negative infinity of e to the 1 over x, we get, oops, we get to 1 as well. So this, in this case, we would have the same graph. We'd be approaching this way. We also get to OK, so that gives us the end behavior. We know that we're going to have uh, horizontal asymptotes at y equals 1, and that works in either direction. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at some uh, calculus to explore where it's increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down, and identify any local axis means or inflection points. So let's take the first derivative of this. So we had f of x is equal to e to the 1 over x. So if we take the first derivative, we get, uh, well, the derivative of e to an expression would be e to that expression. But there's a chain rule there, so we need to multiply by the derivative of 1 over x. Okay. Notice that there are no critical numbers to this. Why not? Well, 
Critical numbers are where the function is e where the derivative is either undefined or equal to zero. Well, this derivative is undefined if I plug in a zero for x, but we'd already excluded that from the domain of the function. And this derivative never equals zero because that would happen if the numerator is zero, but we've already said that the numerator of that expression, that expression can never be zero. So we have no critical numbers in the first derivative. By the way, that means we can have no, we will have no local maxes or local mins. Um, now let's look at the second derivative. So to do this, we're going to have to do the quotient rule. And so let's go, let's go back to uh, this formulation of it. So taking the quotient rule on the first derivative, we've got the bottom times the derivative of the top minus uh, 1 over x. So the derivative of minus e to the 1 over x is minus e to the 1 over x times minus 1 over x squared. So that was the derivative of the, uh, sorry, that was the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top function minus the top function, which was minus e to the 1 over x times the derivative of the bottom, which is 2x, all over the bottom function, x squared, squared. Okay, this looks like a mess, but it actually cleans up pretty nicely. We end up with e to the 1 over x plus 2x e to the 1 over x all over x to the fourth, or we could put that into factored form. As e to the 1 over x times uh, 1 plus 2x. So in this case, we've got uh, critical numbers for the first derivative at uh, x is equal to minus 1 half. Notice that even though this is still undefined at 0, neither was the original function, so 0 is not a critical number. And the numerator is only 0 if x is negative a half. Okay, so uh, now we'll go ahead and build a number line. And on that number line, we'll put all of the uh, critical numbers we found, in this case, just at minus a half, plus any exclusions in the domain, which is uh, zero. So now we pick some test points. Let's pick uh, negative one, negative a quarter, and uh, one plug those into both the first and second derivative. So plugging those into the first derivative, we get f prime of the test point. Okay, so if you go all the way back to where we calculated the first derivative, which is way up here, if I plug in uh, negative 1, well, this factor, I can't see I'm right, this factor is negative, and this this factor is positive, excuse me, and this factor is positive. So the only thing dictating the sign on the first derivative is that negative sign. This is decreasing. Likewise, if I plug in negative a fourth or one, we get negative output values. So it's decreasing. Uh, let's plug in these values into the second derivative. So if I plug uh, these values in the second derivative, we're looking at this expression here. And if I plug in uh, negative 1, the output is negative, so we get that the function's concave down at that point. If we plug in negative 1 fourth into here, we get a positive value, so we're concave up. Likewise, if we plug in 1, we're concave up. So if we look at this chart, what do we conclude? Well, we can see that there are no uh, local maxes or mins. We can see that there, um, in fact, then would there would be no global maxes or mins. Because we have no endpoints to check. And finally, we see that at x equals, let's see, at x equals uh, negative a half, the graph changed from concave down to concave up. Since negative one half was in the domain, that means we've got an inflection point there. together and we'll build the graph. Okay. So let's see here, we have no zeros to put on here, no y-intercepts. We said that we had a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. 
uh, we said that um, we have an inflection point at negative a half. By the way, if you plug negative one half into the original function, f of negative one half is approximately uh, 0.14. So if we plug that into the original function, we've got an inflection point uh, right about here. Okay. We have no local maximums to put on there. We do have a hole. We have a hole here at zero, and that applies as we come from the uh, left. And we had a vertical asymptote at zero as well. So let's see if we can put this all together. Well, going back to our chart, we see that uh, we're going to start out decreasing in a concave down manner. So if we come in here decreasing in a concave down manner, that inflection point, uh, we get that. At negative one half, we have the inflection point, so we change from concave down, uh, from concave down to concave up, we continue decreasing, and we approach the hole that was at zero. After we step over this vertical asymptote, we are then decreasing in a concave up manner. Oops, quite right. We are decreasing in a concave up manner towards our horizontal asymptote at y equals one. Um, I think that's all I have to say about this, except this was the interesting graph where, notice what's happening at zero, we had both a hole and a vertical asymptote. Um, if you have any questions on that, let me know.